I took out my fall decorations and I had not one but two candy corns. This one you can see I put some glass on and and then I had this blank one and I thought let's do some hand lettering or calligraphy on it. So I put a poll out on Instagram and you came back with a trick or treat. So today we're going to walk through the steps of lettering on a wood painted object. So this one is a piece of candy corn. You might have something else that you're working on. I'm going to use what I have to create something new for Halloween that matches something that I created last year. Let's dive in. First step for anything that I letter on is to make a template. Now, this one you can see is easy because it fits on a 9 by 12 piece of paper. If this was a larger object, a door hanger, say, a large circle, I'll take butcher paper and draw a circle around that. So for this, I simply traced it. That's what you see here on the pencil drawing. And then marked where my lines for the transitions from white to orange and orange to yellow were on here so that I could see, see on my pencil drawing what my calligraphy might look like. And then I played around with different layouts. And that's where this is at right now. Now I'm going to actually do the calligraphy on this page so that then I can transfer it on to my candy corn. So I'll speed this up, but here's what we are going to do. I'm going to use a, a large brush pen and I'm simply using here Canson marker paper. Part of what I like about this marker paper is it's a translucent paper, so you can see when I put this black piece of paper under here, you can still see a little bit through it. So let's do the calligraphy on this, and then I'll show you how to transfer that over to another object. And there we have our design that we're going to now transfer over to our candy corn wood cutout. Now, if you have transfer paper, that would be the easiest way to do this. But I'm going to show you a trick that all you really need is a pencil. And you're going to fill the back of this with lead. You're essentially making carbon transfer paper. Now you want to make sure that this is on thick enough that you're going to be able to press and get an imprint on the object that you're trying to work with. So you may have to layer a little bit to make this happen. Cover it nice and dark and again I'm going to speed this up because you don't need to see me coloring in pencil colors. Okay I think that should do it to be able to transfer this over. So we've got that nice and <laughs> Nice and filled in. You see where I, you may be able to see where I also transferred this onto my page. So now what I'm going to do is take this and place it on my wood cutout. And I'm actually going to try and center this on the page so this doesn't drive me crazy. Yes, just a little bit anal. Don't pick up your transfer sheet because the second you pick it up you're not going to be able to find an exact spot 
to put this back down. So you might want to, if you're doing this again on something different, tape it down. Um, I actually have some washi tape here that I'm going to tape on my edge. Okay, I've taped that down. We have our object positioned and we have our paper that we have written on and we're going to trace. Now what we're going to do is trace the letter and I am simply going to trace the outside of the letter because this is a large brush pen and I'm going to be doing faux calligraphy either with my Posca pen or with a paintbrush. And I'm going to trace around that so that I know where I am going to fill in. Now, the other way that you could do this is just trace the middle of the line and then you'll know where you need to go thicker and where you need to go thinner based on your ups and your downs. Otherwise known as upstrokes and downstrokes. So once we have this all traced, we'll have an outline of our hand lettering on our object that we'll be able to paint. So I'll speed this up and see you once this is complete. Okay, now I don't know if you can see here where it says trick. So the point is that you can see it, the person doing the craft, you don't want anybody else to be seeing it. So we have our pencil lines marked in and the next step will be painting in our words. So here I am adding a base layer of paint to the design that I went ahead and transferred onto my wood drawing. So you see me here coloring in the calligraphy lines so that I have a base layer of white paint that then I'm going to come over and cover with black paint. And I am simply using a 0.7 Posca pen in the color white. Okay, so I started with the Posca pen, but what I was noticing is the paint from the tip was kind of splattering across the design. So instead, I've grabbed my DecoArt Americana Lamp Black paint, and I'm just going to use a paintbrush to color in the letters instead. And yes, I'm using acrylic paint with a watercolor brush. This is a size zero round. This is what I have done calligraphy with using watercolors. So it's what I'm comfortable with. And if I ruin this brush, these are very cost effective brushes and I'm not worried about it. And I'm going to speed this up because once again, you don't need to see every tiny paintbrush mark that I make on these strokes. been a little bit since I've done watercolor 
calligraphy. So I'm feeling a little bit rusty. And what I'm pausing to remind myself here is what I often say to others about doing calligraphy, period, and that's go slow. Okay, I'm going to pause there. You still see some white and some rough edges, and that is absolutely okay. This was just the first layer of black to begin to fill in the color that I wanted on my trick-or-treat candy corn. So we're gonna let this dry, and then we'll do, I'll do another layer and clean up the black edges, and also add in some white shadows around the edges to give it some dimension. Okay, so for the final steps, I used a variety of tools as you can see here. I first filled in with the Americana DecoArt Lamp Black paint, and then I touched it up with an Arteza marker pen and gave it some highlights with the Posca 0.7 white. So this is the final product of doing calligraphy on a piece of candy corn, a wood piece, and as a comparison, here was the first one that I did that was just a plain shiny with some glass spots on it. Um, and so now I have a pair, one that says trick or treat and one that is um, with the, the glass on it. So hope that helps you to hand letter or do calligraphy on a wood piece or something that you would like to display either for Halloween, for Thanksgiving, or maybe even the Christmas season. If you'd like some help writing trick or treat, you can go over to my website at curiouscreative.co and you can download a free traceable of trick or treat if you're not sure how to write it in calligraphy. Put it on whatever you want. Have some fun this season. I hope you have a great week of being curious and getting creative. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.